Even before the rubble stopped smoldering, the explanations had begun for the mayhem and destruction that had finished off Woodstock 99. This Woodstock was all about money. Who knows, there was so much ecstasy and acid and everything else flowing, who knows what the mentality, it's, it's a lack of mentality. Come on, Woodstock! Before it all went bad, Woodstock 99 got off to a cheerful start. Awesome, this right here is Woodstock 99 at its finest. And it wasn't long before the time-honored Woodstock traditions were in full effect. People running around topless and uh, throwing mud all over the place. It's crazy. The A-list lineup was a litany of the era's best-loved festival acts. Total devastation. Bloodthirsty maniacs trying to kill me. And I had a freaking good time, too. But alongside the good-natured debauchery, there was an undercurrent of male aggression young women as the all too frequent targets. Just because a girl wants to go crowd surfing or whatever, that doesn't give the guys the right to molest them, you know what I'm saying? It was disgusting. I was molested and I hate all men now. And you would do it again? Of course. Eight rapes and sexual assaults during the festival were reported to New York police who have made an arrest in one of the cases. Excuses for the boorish behavior were far more abundant than the venue's minimal amenities, like free water or toilets. The shit's coming out of the seats. I mean, that's... That shouldn't be for us. There was the oppressive heat, the ugliness of Griffiths Air Force Base, and of course, the high prices for food and drink. You know, at this point, people were so broke and so out of it, they didn't give it. They were getting something out of Woodstock, whether they had to tear it down or hurt somebody. But do high prices and poor conditions lead to this? Please. Unavoidably, the focus returned to the audience itself and the act. They can't have Limp biscuit, and then they come out and say, all right, the crowd's gonna calm down. And then they have Rage Against the Machine come out. All right, you guys gotta calm down. And then Metallica come out. You can't do that. Many in attendance would cite the set by Limp Biscuit as the moment when the festival's vibe turned from fun to fearsome. Well, I don't think they should have had people like Limp Biscuit here when it's we're promoting peace and he gets up there and says, peace. Dude, it's not our fault. That's all I can say. Take your Birkenstocks and stick them up your ass. Birkenstocks? Some Woodstock 99ers seemed like aggros without a cause. Yes? I'm sick of the Backstreet Boys on MTV Live. I'm sick of that. <laughs> you know, it's bullshit. Don't hold back on me. I'm not holding back. I hate that. Bands like Biscuit seemed to market anger to a young male audience affluent enough to spend $155 for a concert ticket. But were these people really angry? It's hard to really know. This was pathetic at the very least. Thank God um, no one got seriously hurt. Uh, no permanent damage to any real buildings. But it's, it's, it's inexcusable, the behavior of these couple hundred knuckleheads. Do you think that aggro vibe had uh, anything to do with what yeah, happened? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that that's what drew the large male, white male, Abercrombie Fitch population of young, white, male, frustrated, upper middle class, I've been given everything and still I'm mad, but I'm not really sure why I'm mad, kind of attitude. We were 25 feet up in the air, <laughs> separated from everyone. There's a sea of people, and we had sound difficulties, but from what we looked, saw, it looked like everyone was having an amazing time. Yeah. You have no idea that there was anything negative happening. Is this the end of Woodstock? Don't be so sure. It's still a powerful brand name, and there's still money to be made. Woodstock 99, goodbye and maybe good riddance.